reactions from Capitol Hill about the January 6th riots, what two former White House deputy aides had to say about former President Donald Trump's actions to try and stop the insurrection. A live look outside right now over the city as the race to Mackinac gets ready to set sail. It's going to be another warm day, but there's a chance for a few more storms creeping in later tonight. Good morning. It is Friday, July 22nd. I'm Ryan Baker. Thanks for starting your day with us. Yeah, good to be with you. I'm Andrea Navigas. Thanks for joining us on TV, streaming us on CBS News Chicago. We've got either on this Rob Ellis and for Laura this morning. And you mentioned the rain, Ryan. You know, of course, the timing of that's so important for people making plans. Yeah, and also for the race as well yeah. that Ryan mentioned. Um, I've kind of been going back and looking at, okay, when are these storms going to arrive? Because even if they don't impact your outdoor plans, they're going to impact the race. What's the worst thing? You know, and I think, I think they may have some concerns about that. Let's start with our forecast for what we expect for today. Temperatures into the 70s currently, but some 60s outside the city. The urban heat island is certainly taking a place right now with 75. Important temperature at midway. We expect mostly clear to partly cloudy skies over the next several hours, but I think more of these clouds will start to filter in. In fact, there's one system back to the west that we have to watch and see how much of that survives. I think most of the moisture is going to dry up with it, although a few showers may try to make it into some of our western viewing area, but the clouds are probably going to stay with it, so I think we're going to see clouds for most of the uh, middle part of the morning into the afternoon. It's not going to have much of an impact on our temperatures. Our temperatures should be able to get into the upper 80s. 89 is what I'll put on the board, but a couple of 90s are certainly possible. Not as warm as yesterday because of those few clouds. Looking to tonight, there is that chance for some storms late. 71 for the overnight low, and we've got more chances for storms tomorrow and into Sunday, but the timing here is really critical. And coming up, I am going to outline that timing how it will impact your weekend and also how it will impact the race. All right, Rob, thanks. Breaking right now at 4.30, Chicago police are responding to reports of a stabbing on a red line train right near the North and Clybourne station. This is a live look from the scene right now. We see some police tape there. We're waiting for confirmation. But we're hearing this was more than one victim involved and possibly people taken into custody. Now, we first heard about this attack a little over an hour ago. If you're getting ready to take the red line early this morning, be aware trains in both directions are bypassing North and Clybourne. The CTA is offering a shuttle bus instead. Our Mugu Digwe is there right now. She'll have a live report from the scene in our next half hour. The January 6th committee held its eighth and final hearing in primetime last night, and it was another night of big reveals. The committee members went over then President Trump's refusal to quell his supporters' violence on Capitol Hill. CBS's Skylar Henry has all the details. The House Select Committee investigating January 6th detailed former President Trump's inaction as his supporters stormed the Capitol. This man of unbridled, disruptive energy could not be moved, not by his aides, not by his allies. For more than three hours from the time Mr. Trump finished his speech to when this video was posted. So go home. We love you. You're very special. Aides say the president sat in the White House watching the violence unfold. Two administration officials who resigned told the committee that Mr. Trump ignored multiple pleas to call off the attack. If the president had wanted to make a statement um, and address the American people, he could have been on camera almost instantly. Former Deputy National Security Advisor Matthew Pottinger said he resigned after seeing Mr. Trump's tweet attacking Vice President Mike Pence. I simply didn't want to be associated with uh, uh, with the events that were unfolding on the Capitol. Pottinger said the tweet added fuel to the fire, and as the mob moved through the Capitol, Secret Service agents protecting Pence started to fear for their own lives. On January 7th, Mr. Trump taped a video saying he was outraged by the violence, but never before seen outtakes show him struggling with the script. I don't want to say the election's over, I just want to say the Congress has certified the results without saying the election's over, okay? The committee's vice chair, Wyoming Republican Liz Cheney, announced additional hearings will be held this September. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Chair. As for the missing Secret Service text messages from January 5th and 6th that the committee wants to see, the Department of Homeland Security's Inspector General is conducting its own probe and asked the Secret Service to stop its internal investigation. The IG says any wrongdoing it finds will be referred to the Justice Department for possible criminal charges. President Joe Biden is isolated in the White House this morning after testing positive for COVID-19. The 79-year-old says he's doing well and is experiencing some mild symptoms. President Biden is taking the medication Paxlovid, an anti-
anti viral therapy. The White House took this opportunity to encourage everyone to get vaccinated and boosted, especially Americans over the age of 50, like the president, who has double boosted. Today, Chicago's top doc will be given an